I think the paint pots is one of the coolest volcanic features here at Yellowstone. And wow, look! The thermal camera shows which spots here are hot in yellow and which are cool in blue. You can see that some places look like normal mud, but they're hot and you wouldn't be able to tell without the thermal camera, or also called an infrared or an IR camera. But how can the IR camera tell the temperature of the mud without touching the mud? It can do so by being able to see other colors of light. Other colors of light? What? I'll give more scientific detail towards the end of this video. But basically, all the objects around us are giving off light all the time. But that light they're giving off is redder than red light. We can't see it. The IR camera allows us to see those redder than red colors, showing us actually the temperature of the object or the liquid or anything else. Infrared light can act a little bit weird. Do we have a candle and a glass? Or... So, now, back to Yellowstone in the infrared. Here's the Grand Geyser. Be sure to go see the Grand Geyser if you get to Yellowstone. Look at that eruption. This is bigger than Old Faithful, and it's regular enough that you can actually be sure to be there to see it erupt. Many of us know that Yellowstone is home to a super volcano. But I didn't realize just how much volcanic activity there is there. Out of all the geysers in the whole world, most of them are here at Yellowstone. Wow! Come on, guys. Coming. No. I found berries. Doesn't Alexander. Matter. No, the raspberries are really good. Doesn't Samuel, matter. Alexander. Come on, doesn't no. matter. Okay. Uh, Bard. Hey, Bard. Doesn't matter. Why do you want episode Samuel raspberries? Alexander. Mark will get them. They're really Come good. Come on, we gotta go. It doesn't matter. Okay. I just... That's... Uh, it's... Sammy, there's someone, there's someone watching us. Doesn't matter. But, but... <laughs> Here we have an interesting shot of the Excelsior Geyser Crater draining into a river. Now there's two waterfalls here, and especially on the second waterfall, you can actually see the trail of the hot water going into the cooler river uh, as it flows down the river. And I think that's really interesting because with your normal eyes, you wouldn't be able to tell that the water right there is warmer than the water over here. But this infrared camera allows us to see that trail of hot water. Also, while filming these uh, synced up footage, it's basically just me holding a normal camera right next to an IR camera together and kind of panning around at the same time. And you can see that especially here as we're looking at the Excelsior Geyser Crater. Uh, this geyser was once a one of the most active geysers in Yellowstone, uh, but it was so active that it ended up blowing itself up and it's now kind of a crater. Uh, or just a spring that is draining out really hot boiling water which is flowing down into the river on these little streams and waterfalls that we're seeing now. In this shot, surprisingly, you can see that the ground is hotter than the water, and that's because the ground is being heated by the sun and magma underneath, while the water is being cooled by evaporative cooling. Evaporative cooling is one of the most efficient ways to cool something down. This is a waterfall that comes off from the Excelsior Crater into the uh, Fireball River. Fireball River? 
I'm pretty sure it's Fireball River. I'm pretty sure it's that, but... Firewall. Firewall River? Fireball? Hole. Fire Hole okay. River. <laughs> you can see the hot bar coming off from the rock. The, yeah. Uh, this is Ball Geyser. I'm it's pretty cool. sure... It, 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 don't interrupt. <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, uh. It it come it lasts for five minutes I think and and comes back in ten minutes and continues to do that. We watched it when we were waiting for the grand, grand geyser. geyser. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna end soon. Yeah. It's still going though. No. 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 <gasps> How hot is it? It is hot. Forest. 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 More forest. Forest. Even more forest. forest. Hey, look, a buffalo. Buffalo. Hmm, it's pretty hot. It's not in front, though. Buffalo. As for you, like forest. Aw, more forest. forest again. And here we are at the mud volcano, which is still called the mud volcano even though it does not look like a volcano. Prior to 1871, this mud volcano looked like a volcano, spewing mud instead of uh, lava. And you could still see the mud being spewed out, but it's more of a mud pot than it is a mud volcano. And here we are at Old Faithful, probably one of the most famous features of Yellowstone. We are viewing it from a distance so that you can see the full effect of the gushing water and the heat of that That's water nice. that is going it's into going the air up. on the thermal yeah. camera. You can also see some of the features in the area in the form of the mist that is floating in front of us, uh, in between us and the geyser. Strange. This is also a great view spot if you want to avoid crowds. This part of the video begins with a picture of the sign and Crested Pool in the background. The neat thing about this video is, is that you can see the contrast between the coolness of the sign and the hot waters of the pool behind it. The other interesting thing is if you look at the sign, you'll notice that not all features on the sign are the same temperature. The water from Crested Pool flows under the boardwalk and to the other side and you can see the hot waters flowing away and the edges of that water heated as well and there's some spots along the edges that you don't see as hot except for through the video camera so look at the edges this is the crested pool itself you can see the place where it's bubbling is hotter than the other areas. That's where the hottest water is coming up to the surface, and it's bubbling right there. The edges around the uh, pool itself are also warm, and so you can see some heat there. And here's our view of the paint pots. You can see the hot spots. You can see hot spots outside where it doesn't look like it, the ground is hot there, but in the AR, you can still see it's hot there. Also, you can see where most of the bubbles are with the um, highest areas in your camera. Over over in this area, it's more apparent where the um, invisible hot spots are.
The Fountain Geyser is the only geyser in all of Yellowstone that runs continuously without stopping. Hey, that was pretty fun to be able to see the color all around Yellowstone that showed us the actual temperature of those geysers. But what's really going on? Maybe I should back up a minute. How about this? What's your favorite color? You can think about what colors you have to choose from, but are there more colors than that? It turns out there's a lot more colors than that. We all know the familiar red, green, blue, etc. We all know that Isaac Newton showed that we can take white light and split it into those colors. But more than a century after Isaac Newton discovered that, another scientist came across something that was even more amazing. William Herschel was taking a look at those colors and he was trying to understand how much heat each one gave when it was um, shining on something. So he split up a spectrum and put thermometers on each color. And he found that some of these colors gave more heat than other ones. That's a pretty neat discovery. But even more amazing was the discovery he made just after that. He had another thermometer, one with no light shining on it. And he noticed that that one was showing even more heat than all the other ones. But how could that be with no light shining on it? It was just off the red end of the spectrum he realized that there was an invisible color, a color he couldn't see that was shining on his thermometer heating it up. Wow, an invisible color. And that's just the start. Further experimentation after that showed that there's a whole range of colors. You can see here on the electromagnetic spectrum that there's colors that are bluer than blue, redder than red. And in fact, that the colors that we see, the things that we think of as colors are just a tiny little narrow band on that whole electromagnetic spectrum. All these different wavelengths of light are actually different colors. Wavelength is just a sciencey term that we use to talk about the length of these waves, but in our regular everyday understanding, it simply means color. So if we take a look at all those different colors, we realize that our eyes have only evolved to see this tiny little narrow band. That there's so many other colors out there. Imagine what the world would look like if you could see those other colors. You'd be able to walk outside and see the x-rays from different stars up in the sky. You'd be able to see the bright shining radio waves from the tower in the distance and so much more, including all of the temperatures that we just saw in the Yellowstone videos. We're already familiar with the fact that different materials can act differently depending on the wavelength or the color of the light. Think about a green Mountain Dew bottle. You can see that obviously the green light is affected very differently than say red light or something like that that's blocked by that plastic. We see the same thing in the infrared wavelengths or colors. And the neat thing is that for those colors, they act a little bit differently than what we're used to. I'll give you an example. If you take a look right here, I've got a silicon wafer. Silicon is shiny because it reflects the visible light wavelengths that we're used to. But does it do that for the infrared? I don't think so. Take a look. Now, just like a piece of glass, it does reflect. So if I put it face on, you can see features in the room around us. But for infrared light can go right through it. Similarly, glass or polycarbonate, things that we're used to as being transparent, like my glasses, are not transparent to the infrared. Look at this. And of course, Things that are completely opaque to the visible might not be opaque to the infrared. So when someone asks you what your favorite color is, just remember that you've got so many more options to choose from. Don't be boxed in.
by the narrow little group of colors that our eyes can actually see. There's millions and millions of more colors out there. As for me, my favorite color is gamma. Science allows us to see so much more, understand so much more about our world. There's so much more out there for us to all discover. Wait until you see what's waiting. Have a good day.